2021 was a banner year for many organizations as the pandemic, predicted to be devastating to nonprofits, saw a great increase in giving. But 2022 was anything but a banner year. In fact, it was a letdown for many organizations. Stay tuned for ways to formulate a fundraising strategy and prepare for increased income and growing your donations in this coming year. We enter every year with hope and optimism, but last year ended with a thud as giving to many nonprofits fell short of projections and short of giving from 2021. As we head into 2023, it's essential that you formulate a plan and a strategy to become fully funded this year and hopefully exceeding giving from 2022. Here are four keys to growing donations and crafting a winning fundraising plan. Key number one, analyze current situation. Before planning for the future, get a glimpse of the past. Look back at various key indicators within your overall development effort. Did your income increase, decrease, or stay the same from one year to the next? Did the total number of donors to your organization increase or decrease? Did you have a net loss or gain of donors? How many new donors did you acquire? Did the number of overall gifts or donations increase or decrease? Drill down on the effectiveness of each income strategy. Evaluate how each income strategy did. For mailings, did you get more gifts or donations than last year or less? Was your overall income up or down from the prior year? If you had an event or events, was attendance up? Was the average gift size for a couple or a single up or down? Factor in the results of your events pre-pandemic and post-pandemic. For most organizations, numbers are back to pre-pandemic, but results vary greatly by geography. You should also factor in how long you have been doing a particular income strategy. With older strategies, they may be mature and income is steadily increasing, unless it's a dying strategy. But special consideration should be given to new or startup efforts. Some programs need time to mature before seeing a significant return on investment. Then look at your staffing. Did the number of full-time, part-time, and volunteer staff increase, decrease, or stay the same? Do you have adequate staffing to accomplish your mission, especially as it relates to programs and fundraising? If staffing is inadequate, that could be factored into funding proposals related to improving programs. Key number two, set goals per income strategy. When setting goals for your income strategies, it's important that you're optimistic but also realistic. An important axiom that I learned in my first few years in nonprofit leadership is that mission should drive development, not development drive mission. What that means is that your overall corporate strategic plan should drive your development fundraising efforts. You should never rely on what you believe you'll raise this year to drive your strategic plan. The best strategy is to establish the plan and then leave it to the development people to raise the money to fund that plan. Goals for income strategies should be broken up into three categories mass, middle, and major. The mass category consists of efforts to reach the masses, the 80% of your donors that bring in 20% of your income. This consists most frequently of direct mail and direct marketing strategies. Direct marketing, letters, cards, and email marketing is the first line of defense with most organizations. New and first-time gifts tend to come in through direct marketing, and these efforts serve as the foundation or bedrock of most giving programs. It doesn't produce the most money, but the largest number of donors flow through this strategy, and the materials produced are a good element of an introduction for donors. The calendar years 2020 and 2021 were banner years for direct marketing. With people in lockdown and not meeting personally, donors took the time to read direct mail letters and gave through that medium rather than through face-to-face appointments. 
Preliminary reports at the end of 2022 show signs that direct mail went back to numbers raised in 2019, pre-pandemic or possibly a little bit better. Thus, income projections for the future will look more like 2022 than 20 or 21. Last year, I recommended doubling down on your communication strategies, more appeal letters and emails, more newsletters, and more public awareness via social media. This year, I'm recommending going back to pre-pandemic communication and doubling down in your major donor area. More on that soon. However, if there's an area to ramp up or improve, it's social media. If you don't have a presence on social media, you're going to be left in the dust. You'll be an old relic on the shelf. As I've said in other videos, you don't have to be on every social media platform, but pick one or two that your audience seems to use most and that you feel comfortable with and improve on that with every new post. If you're only posting weekly, it's as if you aren't posting at all. Consider posting at least five days per week, skipping the weekends, or schedule posts over the weekend and post seven days. Real dynamic growth in social media comes from posting frequently. Your goal should be ultimately to be posting three times a day. I know that might seem unattainable, but work up to that. Don't try and do it immediately or you'll fail. The next area is the middle category. For most organizations, this consists of donors giving or with the capability of giving a largest single gift of a thousand, often up to 5,000 or more. There should be a ceiling to the middle category and it should end somewhere about the critical few, the 20% that give 80% of your money. The critical few should be in the major category and they should receive personal calls and visits. The middle category includes one or more staff or volunteers who call donors regularly. Since it's impossible for most organizations, even with a team, to call everyone on their mailing list or the masses regularly, calling this subsection of the list is very fruitful. The middle category tends to work very well in partnership with direct mail. However, where direct mail letters usually begin with dear friend, the same letter to those in the middle category should begin with a personalized version of the letter such as Dear John and Mary or Dear Mr. and Mrs. Jones. Middle donors are called following the appeal letter depending on the frequency of your mailings. I would never recommend calling 12 times a year if you mail that many times. But at a minimum, three to four mailings at key times of the year should be followed up with a phone call. Spring, fall, and year-end calls at a minimum work well. In between, those in the middle category can be called to get updates on how their money is being used without an appeal. That is referred to as a passive ask, and people may give after receiving a call from you. Faith-based organizations can solicit prayer requests, and if that's done, please record those so that the next call can include a question about the status of that request. It's important to add any communication into your customer relationship management or CRM software. That includes a letter, email, gift, call, or visit, and any other touch point. The last area is the major category. That typically consists of, as I mentioned earlier, the critical few. Those 20% who give 80% of the income to your organization. That should be a manageable number of donors being called and visited on a regular basis. Typically, those are individuals giving a larger single gift of 5,000 or 10,000 or more per year, depending on the size of your organization and the number of donors in that category. Determine which dollar category works best for you. I mentioned in my video, Growing Donations in 2022, that I employ a strategy called the 333 pause method. That's three letters, notes, emails, three phone calls, and three visits over a 12 month period to each of these in the mass category. I got great feedback from those of you who implemented this. The 333 pause strategy has proven to be extremely effective and simple to implement. 
it doesn't have to be so legalistic that you feel like a failure if you only get one visit for a donor a year and can't call three times per year. It's a guideline and if followed, will help you enhance and deepen relationships with current donors. Prospect donors, those are non-donors with the capacity to give at this dollar category can be run through a 111 pause strategy over a 12 month period. I've created various videos to help you get appointments with and make proposals to major donors and place them in a playlist at the end of this video. Key number three, weave crossover efforts into your plan. There are a handful of efforts that could be considered as income strategies but actually act as a bridge or filler in between the three prior income strategies. If your organization conducts events such as dinners or banquets, you might invite mass, major, and middle to attend those events and thus act as crossover strategies. Events work well to accomplish all three. Appreciate current donors, provide information and inspiration to new and current donors, and challenge all to opportunities for financial involvement. Your organization may rely on events solely as income strategies, but they are, are a tremendous way to accomplish the three objectives just mentioned and allow you to incorporate the win, keep, and lift model. You win new donors to your cause, keep current donors, and lift others, especially the critical few, to greater levels of involvement. Communication, marketing, and public relations also serve as crossover strategies in that they may generate direct income, but they are used primarily to keep donors by informing, inspiring, and challenging individuals from all three categories, mass, middle, and major. Your organization may also rely on foundations, plan giving and estate planning, United Way, combined federal campaign, and other strategies for income. So set goals for each, but they really serve primarily as crossover strategies. Key number four, evaluate staffing needs for development. It's important that your plan also includes the staff needed to properly implement any income strategy listed above, especially when it comes to staff heavy activities like events. My definition of staffing is not just full-time staff, but also part-time staff and volunteers as well. Many, if not most nonprofits, utilize volunteers and give them great responsibility that includes running and implementing an income strategy. Events are some of the best ways to utilize volunteers. The lifeblood of any nonprofit is its human resources. They serve as the most valuable commodity, so it's important to recruit staff well and treat them right. Getting the right people on the bus, as former CEO of GE Jack Welch used to say, is just as important as doing the job right. Most, if not all, of these people have a heart for your cause and are willing to give countless hours for little or no pay, so treat them like gold. Too many plans are established without recognizing who, what leader, will be responsible for implementing a strategy. Each leader should be required to have a plan for implementing the strategy, but they should be given an adequate budget and staff to properly see the task through to completion. If you incorporate the strategies listed in this video and in my other videos on this channel, this should be a year of dynamic growth and hopefully you'll see your nonprofit fully funded. This can be achieved through hard work, tremendous focus, and of course, countless prayers. You can do this and you, we can do it together. I believe in you. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, hit the like button and add a comment below listing which of the concepts you like best or want to start first. If there was something you especially liked, try that. If you've never subscribed to this channel, please know that there's no cost to you, but the more subscribers we have, the more this message gets out to others and the more we can all share in the wealth derived from our collective experiences. Simply hit the subscribe button and click the all bell to be notified when the next video is released and consider sharing this with a friend or a colleague. If you have fundraising questions, submit them on Twitter 
at Jim W. Dempsey and use the hashtag Jim and Java on Instagram also at Jim W. Dempsey or email me at jdempsey0813 at gmail.com. If you're a Facebook user and want to make a difference in our world, consider joining our Life Changers community group. And as always, I wish you the best as you strive to reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Thanks a lot. See you in the next video.